Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our celebration here at St. Leonard's. Uh, I'm glad you're able to join us and to join the family of St. Leonard's. And uh, I hope that this is a time of renewal, of growth, and of peace and love for you. And so before we start our service this morning, we'll just take a moment of silence to open our hearts, to be uh, willing and able to hear what God wants us to hear. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Be Thou My Vision.
our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing, sing to the Lord. Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the towers of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend to knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is our light and our life. Oh, oh come, come, let us worship. We listened to the word of the Lord. The first reading is from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for the discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. Second reading is from Romans 8, 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit is himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. And, who, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. 
What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave, gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels or rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height or depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our gospel hymn is Seek Ye First. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of the seeds, but when it has grown, it, has great it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes out and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. 
On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught every, every fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew into, a sh into shore, sat down, and put the good into the baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come, will come out and separate evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understand all this? Understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Well, today you heard five parables, <laughs> all in one. Uh, the, the last two weeks we've listened to parables. It was only one parable each Sunday. So, you know, to give you an idea, we did one the last two Sundays. Now we have five. You know, settle in for a really long homily. <laughs> Just kidding. We're not going to, I'm not going to delve into the, the psalm, I mean the uh, parables so much today as looking at what is a parable? What's the purpose of a parable? And um, Matthew keeps on talking about, you know, the kingdom of heaven is. So what is he talking about when he says the kingdom of heaven? So first off, um, the word parable uh, is derived from a Greek word that means to throw alongside. So we, we have the kingdom of heaven and we have this parable, this um, reflection thrown alongside, whether it's the mustard seed or the yeast or the sower in the field, uh, they are all designed to, to give us a different description, uh, something that helps us get a fuller understanding of what, in this case, the kingdom of heaven is. It, uh, they're meant to make us think. They're not, you know, here's the checklist, this is what makes it. Um, it's, we're not supposed to just accept or assume a pat explanation or see things linear. Uh, they require us to go within and to look more deeply at uh, what it may mean and to contemplate that meaning. Uh, in actuality, the, the uh, parables we heard the last two weeks, we heard the parable and then the explanation. Well, that's the way the lectionary writes it. In the Bible, there's actually quite a bit in between the parable and the explanation and that just sort of furthers that whole idea that here it is and you're left with some time to think about it what what does that mean and uh, so that's that's what parables are about um, it's a method of storytelling that's to pique our interest and to make us think a little bit more now what is it that Matthew is referring to when he says the kingdom of heaven and so that we're clear, Matthew uses that, that term most often, whereas um, uh, Mark and Luke uh, use the kingdom of God uh, more frequently. And just so that we're clear, those are the same thing. They're talking about the same thing. Um, and city of God, reign of God, all of those would be speaking to the same thing. Uh, but especially in Matthew, when he, uh, he keeps on saying this is, you know, the kingdom of heaven, some people, I think, take it quite literally that what he is describing is heaven, it, like where I, I hope I go when I die, you know, the place at the end of the us up escalator at uh, the end of our life. Uh, but that's not the case. The kingdom of heaven is here and now. Jesus 
broke into this world and brought the kingdom of heaven with him. Now, that's not saying that, that God wasn't present prior to that. Of course, God was always present in the world and before the world. But there was an understanding prior to Christ that uh, God was somewhat separate. You know, Moses had to go up to the mountain to speak to God. Uh, or God came down in a pillar of fire or, you know, smoke. That, that there was a separation between them. Jesus came and, uh, and, and remember, when we're talking about God, Jesus is God, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. So God came down in Jesus to be with us and among us. That God came to be present in the moment and with us always. He, obviously, you know, being in human form, there, there could be no denying that presence. And then uh, Jesus promises, before he dies, he promises us, and uh, uh, in chapter, uh, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, he says, Jesus says to his disciples, but he's speaking to all of us, and I will ask the Father, and he will send and give you another advocate to be with you forever. Another advocate, that's the Holy Spirit, helper, it depends on your translation. But Jesus, as God, is sending with his Father the Spirit to be with us always. That we, so not only is, is God present in and among us and, and in this very moment, God is within us. The Spirit is within us always. And that's a promise that we count on and we believe, and it is forever, that doesn't change. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is right here, right now, as it was before and will always be. So the parables on the lips of Jesus are telling us what it looks like to live in the kingdom of God, what it looks like to live with, uh, in a world where God is the way and the truth and the life. Now certainly, we live in a world, <laughs> the world of man, the kingdom of man, uh, that doesn't always know and understand that. We live in a world where the love and compassion and mercy of God is not always seen. We live in a world where uh, earthly things, materialistic, individualistic, uh, secular ways seem to reign supreme. But they, are, they do coexist, just like the, the fish in the net. <laughs> they coexist together, and we have a choice. We have a choice whether we want to live in the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of man. Or as Matthew, and, not shouldn't be or, and as Matthew said, uh, last week in the parable, we can, we can choose to be the good seed and bring the kingdom, thy kingdom come, to the world, or we can be the weeds. And sometimes we're both. But our call is to be and to bring the kingdom of heaven to the world. So in Matthew, there are 23 parables in total. Luke has 24, and Mark has eight. And a lot of those are not the same. Some are, but a lot of them are only found in, in you know, Matthew has, I think, 11, and, and uh, Luke has 14 that aren't heard in any of the other Gospels. So that's a lot of uh, different ways of describing, of using parables to describe the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, why? Why would we need so many different ways to, to say what the kingdom of heaven is? Why don't we just, you know, come out and say, this is it? Well, of course, um, because it's of God, <laughs> there's, there's no possible way. God is so much more than, than we will ever, ever come close to understanding or comprehending. Uh, the love and compassion and, uh, and mercy of God far exceeds uh, 
our ability to understand. So even all of the parables and many more could be written will never fully explain the kingdom of, of God or the, the kingdom of heaven because it's so much more. Words will never be able to, to uh, explain it fully. But we try, we try our best. And so the numerous parables help us to get different insight into uh, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. But we also have to remember we're all individuals experiencing God in different ways because of our life experiences and where we are in the world, all of those things, so that, um, th that, that would also require different ways of looking at God. Um, the number of, of parables help touch the hearts of different people uh, in different ways. Um, so let's, let's just quickly look at, at the parables that we heard today. And, and we can see, so maybe the mustard seed that uh, is scattered and grows into ground bush and then a tree uh, is telling us that in the kingdom of God or with the kingdom of God, size doesn't matter. Modest beginnings can be, can be the start of great things. The yeast is maybe caught, telling us that the kingdom of heaven uh, transform us, transforms us from above. Uh, it's, it's uplifting. It's, life in the kingdom isn't flat and dull. It's, it's full. It empowers us to rise above you know, life circumstances. The hidden uh, treasure speaks of un, unspeakable joy. The man who finds the treasure is so filled with joy that he risks everything to obtain it. So the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is, uh, is full of so much joy that it's worth everything that you have. Now the merchant we hear is looking for a pearl and when he finds this pearl of great price, he too sells everything just to buy the pearl. So we're, we hear that the kingdom of heaven is worth searching for and it's a valuable treasure. And finally, the fisherman's net well, it tells us that the kingdom of God is all-inclusive. It does not exclude anyone. We are all the kingdom of God. There is not a single person in this world or a single thing in this world that is not created by God. And as, as Matthew wants us to get and repeats time and time again, it is not yours or my place to judge anybody. Uh, all are created in the image of God and we're called to love the other. Now, a little caveat on there, that doesn't mean that you, I mean, if there is things that are wrong, it doesn't mean that you stay silent, but it's the judging of the other. You, it is our requirement as Christians to stand for what is right, for justice, as, as our blessing. You know, we, we need to stand up against oppression and all of those things. But but our, our judging uh, of how they are as individuals, how God will see them, isn't ours. It's God's and God's only. Now, those are, those are really quick summaries, <clears throat> excuse me. And as well, they're kind of, you know, the pat answers or explanations, which I've said parables are not about. And, and that's part of the point. What I, I said, you know, somebody else would, would maybe give you a different uh, understanding of those parables uh, because they're coming to it from a different life point uh, than I am. And um, some of you, those parables will speak to you uh, more than others. And again, that's because we're all coming from different places. But the point of the parable would be, you know, to look a little deeper, to, to uh, explore it a little bit more and, and spend that time um, contemplating and meditating with it. So, I mean, we could just look at the yeast and, and go, you know, a little deeper. What, what does it mean to be a woman baking bread? Maybe even a woman in, you know, first century um, uh, Christianity. What does that look like? Um, and, and she bakes the bread for herself and others. Usually don't bake bread just for yourself. And, and 
uh, why do we, why do we break, make bread, break bread with others? Uh, how does that reflect the kingdom of, of God, the kingdom of heaven? Uh, what does it look like to watch bread rise, to watch the yeast work? Um, and how is that like the kingdom? What does that look like in the world, in, in the kingdom of man? And what does it tell us about our God? Um, the fact that Jesus cho chose to break bread with his disciples at the Last Supper, that speaks of bread too. Those would be things to spend time with to get a fuller sense of what the parable means. And that's kind of the intent of the parable. They're meant to be read and wrestled with, explored and savored. Parables, too, not only are they descriptions of the kingdom of heaven, but they're also instructions. They show us how we are to respond in the world. They tell me that just like the yeast, I'm to rise above what is happening um, around me. Uh, and sometimes we have to remember that or I do anyway, that, that maybe I need to search for the kingdom of God, to, to seek the kingdom of God here on earth, just like the merchant was searching for that valuable treasure, and to recognize what value there is to the treasure. So it's, they speak to us about how we respond, how, how we are to seek the kingdom, um, and how we can help bring the kingdom to the world. Our, our Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. We're asking him for his kingdom to come here, <laughs> but knowing it's here also really to help us to bring the kingdom of God to others. Uh, the, the kingdom, or the, the parable of the, the fish, you know, remind us we're all in this together. And it's not our place to judge anybody. So a couple of weeks ago during our Zoom meeting, uh, somebody mentioned they could tell I used to be a teacher <laughs> because I gave homework with my homilies. So I, as you know, or hopefully recognized last week, I didn't give you any homework. So this week I'm going to give you two assignments. <laughs> uh, not really. Uh, but I, I am giving you two suggestions that I would... Uh, that I think would be of benefit uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, a, a place uh, for you to grow in your uh, understanding of God in your life and of the kingdom of heaven. And one would be to, to take any of, say, the 23 <laughs> parables in the Gospel of, of Mark or uh, in any of the Gospels. Well, you won't find them in John, but in Mark, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, there are, there are uh, parables that you could look up and, and spend time with the parable. Read it, you know, contemplate it, uh, and, you know, look at those things. Is there something that stands out, a word or a phrase that speaks to you in a certain way? Or one of the characters, what, what does that character tell you? Uh, about God? How do you see that in the world right now? You know, there's, there's lots of things to look at, um, but really with the goal to say, how does this parable help me understand and see the kingdom of heaven here on earth, as well as how do I respond uh, in this parable? What does that call me to do to bring the kingdom of heaven? to others. So that's one that you could do. Another one I would love to see would be um, that you create your own parable. That you think about what is the kingdom of heaven like for you? What does that look like? What language do you, do you use? Um, I think uh, it would be great to do that. It, it would require time and effort for me anyway, um, but to help us look inwardly to, to be able to describe the kingdom of heaven for us, and, and only a piece, right? Again, I said the kingdom of, of heaven is so much more than we can ever uh, describe, but a piece of it, how it touches you. And 
I don't think it would be a long stretch to assume that if you could come up one, with one for yourself, it would probably speak to other people as well. And so my invitation uh, to both of those homework assignments is that you would share them. And uh, at this point, I think the, um, the place to share them would be uh, to email uh, me at St. Leonard's and uh, St. Leonard's uh, at Shaw.ca, sorry, <laughs> it's on the website. I should have had that one in front of me. Um, and uh, I, I would like to share those and I, I don't need to put people's names to it if you wouldn't want your names to it, but I, any, any time we reflect on scripture and share with others, it's an opportunity for, for others to grow as well as ourselves. So that is my invitation to you and I, I truly hope some of you will, will take me up on that and, and send your uh, insights into existing parables and or uh, write your own parable and share that with others. So um, I, I've spent a little bit of time on this and I have come up with my own parable that I will share. Uh, and right now I'm trying to work that out, but if you email me, uh, we'll figure out a way that that will be shared. Um, and I'll give you a, a little hint uh, just to make you think, what the heck is she talking about? But I see the kingdom of God like the COVID-19. So I'll explain later more, uh, but please, I, I really do hope that you will uh, share with us, but even if not, that you, you take some time to, to uh, be with the parables. Thanks be to God. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious power, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Our offering him is blessed assurance.
society for our community and for the world. The intercessions today are taken from the Book of Alternative Services, page 123, <clears throat> a bidding intercession. Please follow along in your prayer books. We will say the words in bold together. There are many places of silence, so please offer your own prayers to God during the silence. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For this ongoing, for this online gathering, for our Metropolitan and Bishop, Greg, for Pilar and the Synod office staff, for our priests, Chris and Barb, for their families, and for all ministers and people. We pray for your church in the world, especially the persecuted church and the church in places of conflict. Give your people strength, courage, and wisdom. We pray for church leaders. May they remain true to their calling. Today we pray for the Lambeth Conference and for the bishops gathered in Canterbury Kent for that conference. We pray for our companion diocese of Windward Islands, the Opal Friday Edition, St. Mary Beckway with the Holy Cross, Peggy Farm, St. Michael Cancun, Ustik, and St. Matthias Union Island, the Venerable J. Everton Weeks, the Reverend Frank Garraway, and the Windward Islands Diocesan Association. In the Calvary Diocese, we pray for St. Luke, Wehrmar, Grace Anglican United Church, the Reverend Mickey Keyworth, and the Property Committee. In the households of St. Leonard's and St. Paul's, we pray for Daphne and Barry C., Dorothy and Paul C., and Rosalie C. We ask you for wisdom, guidance, and protection from harm. Pray for the Church. Almighty and everlasting God, by your spirit, the body, and your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church. And in our vocation and ministry, may we be truly devout and serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask your prayers for peace and goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. We pray for the peace of the world and those who are working for justice and peace. We pray for world governments and all those in authority. May you give those in power the wisdom and the will to work for truth and righteousness. We pray for our own governments and all those in elected office. Specifically, we pray for Justin, his cabinet, and other MPs in Ottawa. Jason, his cabinet, and other MLAs in Edmonton. Tara and her counselors in Red Deer. Give them wisdom as they make decisions for our country, province, and city in these challenging times. Pray for the world and for our country, Canada. Almighty God, kindle we pray in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that justice and peace may increase, until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayer for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. There is much suffering in our world because of injustice, exploitation, oppression, and violence. We pray that you remove the roots of fear, anger, and greed that feeds evil. We pray for the nations and for peoples everywhere who are affected by natural disasters, political upheaval, and religious terrorism. May they be comforted and aided in healing and rebuilding. May they find peace. We ask that you set free all who are bound by fear and despair. 
We remember our own community of Red Deer. We especially pray for the sick, the unemployed, the homeless and broken, that they may find your comfort and healing. We remember other vulnerable people, specifically the poor, the lonely, seniors, those in care homes, children and families with young children. We ask that you give the most vulnerable what they need. We give you thanks and we pray for your continued healing work in the lives of members of the parish who are going through difficult times. In the hospital, we remember Don and Norma. In our parish, we remember Belt, Jim, Grace, Karen and Colin, Murray, Elaine, Susan, Jean, Marion, and Roy. We give you thanks and pray for the continued healing work in the lives of others who have asked us to pray for them. Lena, Addison, Velvet, Jody, Andrew, Pat, Des, Nye, and Dom, Carly, Anna, Denise, Sandra, McKenna, Carrie, Carol, and Gerald. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer. Hear the cry of those in misery and need. In their affliction, show them mercy. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for the mission of the church. May your kingdom come, may your will be done, on earth as in heaven. You commanded us to love our enemies and pray for them, so we pray for good of those who hate us. Lead us from prejudice to truth, deliver us from hatred, cruelty and revenge, purge our hearts of fear and tolerance. You are light and life. Assist us with identifying and removing the idols in our own lives. Teach us to love you above all, for when we love you first, with our whole being, we are able to love others better and in the right order. We pray for the Red Deer Ministerial Association. We pray for your church in Red Deer, that together we may be salt and light in this community. Specifically today, we remember the New Apostolic Church. We also ask your blessing on all teachers and students of Red Deer Public Schools and Red Deer Catholic and Separate Schools. Pray for the coming of God's kingdom among all nations and peoples. Oh Lord our God, you have made all races and nations to be one family, and you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your Spirit on the whole creation, bring the nations of the world into your fellowship, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. We ask through this through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for those who have died in the peace of Christ, for those whose faith is known to God alone. We especially remember Colleen, the daughter of Don and Susan Robertson, and sister of Patrick. We do not understand why one family undergoes so much pain in so little time. But we hold on to your promise that you will comfort those who mourn. May the Robertson family experience your comforting presence in a very real way now and look forward to future resurrection. Pray that God may be glorified in all his saints and pray for those who mourn. giver of eternal life. We give you thanks and praise for the wonderful grace and virtue 
declared in St. James the Apostle and all her saints. Grant to us and to all who have died in the hope of the resurrection a share in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and fullness of joy in the fellowship of all your saints. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise and thanksgiving is at the heart of worship. We thank you for your good creation and the many blessings you provide. Food, clothing, shelter, and community to name a few. May we never take your blessings for granted. May we all be responsible stewards of your creation and do our part in healing our world and in our relationships. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise that we may all share the good things you provide. We thank you for all essential service workers, those in health care, those involved in every stage of food production and delivery, and those we sometimes do not see. You see us all, and we ask for your blessing on all selfless giving. Let us give thanks to Almighty God for all his goodness. You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. You are worthy to receive blessing and praise now and forever. For yours in the majesty is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen.
May God bless us with discomfort and easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships that we might live deep within our hearts. And may God bless us with holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice and freedom and peace. And may God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world, so that we can, with God's grace, do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. Amen.